Hey guys, it's me Evelyn here on Ironic X Loser, and today I'm going to show you guys how I make my gift sets um, using screen caps. This is one of my um, gift sets I've done using just screen caps, and if you know what screen caps are, um, they're just basically images from a video, and you can easily create them yourself. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that, and also how to make um, gifts using the screen caps in Adobe Photoshop. So first of all, to make your screen caps, you're going to need a program. I use Game Player. Um, um, you can easily search Google and find Cam Player. It's very easy. There are probably also tutorials on YouTube on how to install Cam Player as well. So I won't teach you guys how to do that because I already have it installed and it would be just too tedious to do that. But once you have your um, program, like I use Cam Player, you're going to double click and of course open it. Of course. And I'm going to search for a video on my computer and um, pull it into Cam Player. And I'll do that off screen because it will take time because I want to figure out which video I want to use. But I'll be right back. So I'm going to be doing the 100, um, season 1, episode 1, and I'm just going to do it to where they get onto the planet and they open the dropship door. If you guys are watching 100, I recommend you do. It is a great TV show. It's on season 2 right now. It's about to come back from the season finale. Just saying. You guys ought to watch it. It's on Netflix. Season 1's on Netflix. You should check out season 1, and if you like it, you can go to CW and watch season 2. Well, the first 8 episodes of season 2, and then season 2, the back half of the episodes are going to come out on the 21st and so on and so forth but further ado let's go ahead and get into the tutorial once you have your video open and to your at the scene you want to screen cap you're going to right click on the video and usually your options will be like this now to go ahead and to screen cap you want to go to options and click add events menu once you have your events menu selected you're going to right click again and click capture and click frame extract or control g on your keyboard for a shortcut so i have this here and I'm going to make my video smaller. And as you can see, my prefixes are set to um, Sun and Mook, so I screen capped the music video, or actually the teaser, a while ago. But I'm going to go ahead and just type it the 100. I would have a folder saved, so I'm going to my folders. And go into my desktop, or not my desktop, my documents, into my game player, and into my 100 folder. I'm going to click OK. And my, um, I have my image format to bitmap, which is fast. Um... It's also very good quality. And when I say fast, means it um, screen caps the image faster than if you were to say uh, JPEG or PNG. PNG or higher quality, of course. But the capture rate, it's slow. Um, therefore, it'll take longer for your computer to capture it. And it can possibly crash. My game player crashes sometimes. It depends on the video, to be honest. But yeah, we're going to do bitmap. I'm going to have it continuously set. I have my set to original size. So the size of the, of the video is going to be HD, super HD, or low quality. It will extract that frame size. I have my set to every frame. I'm going to click every two frame for this. And what I'm going to do is click start on my frame extract here. And click start on my video. And I'm going to mute the audio, the audio so that you guys can't really, so you guys can hear it much better compared to me and then the audio, you know, back and forth. So I'm just going to, um, let it extract a good set of uh, the scene. I want the whole scene where they get on the earth. So we'll just let it go. And I'm going to go ahead and just pause until it's done because it will take some time. Okay, so once you're done, you just want to go ahead and click stop on your um, frame extract. So I'm going to do that. And I see I captured 696 frames. And then pause on my video. You can go ahead and exit out of this, and you can exit out of your video player if you want, which I'm going to do so as well. You want to go ahead into your folder where you saved your screen caps, which might be McCain player, into my 100 folder, and they're all going to be here. What I like to do is I like to let my video folder, which all my screen caption, load first before I go into my Photoshop, just so that you can see the screen caps when you um, go into Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, we're going to go ahead and go to File. Usually when we have a video, we're going to go to Import Video Frames to Layers. We don't want to do that for this. What we want to do is we're going to go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Once you do that, you're going to get the Load Layers folder or pop-up window. You can either set it to Folder, which you can select a folder, and it'll upload all the screen caps from that folder into Photoshop. I don't do that because it does take a long time to do that. What I do is I like to go to folder, files, click browse. You want to go ahead into where you saved your images. And then you can go ahead and select what you want first. So I'm going to select here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hold shift 
until I get to my bottom part which I want to stop which will be right here before we go into a different scene and then we're going to click OK once you have that you're going to go ahead and let this do its job it's going to go ahead and just show you all the frames here once you have that done you're going to click load now this is where Photoshop does its magic it's going to go ahead and take each image that you selected open them and put them onto one um, one image so it's going to take a bit of time as you see it's an initializing type tool for some reason mine always says that but just go ahead and it's going to just open them and put them onto one image so if you see here in the layers palette as it goes you'll see that it's starting to um, post the images on top of each other. It will take time. It depends on how many images you open in the um, in the previous step. So I'm going to pause and let it do its job and come back when it's done. Okay, so now that Photoshop is done its job, we're going to go ahead and have this here. Now as you see in your layers, you're going to have a whole bunch of layers depending on how many screen caps you've gotten. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go to Window and click Timeline. Once you have your timeline open, you're going to go ahead to drop down menu and make frames from layers. Now this is a bit similar to the way we did it before, but now we're going to change it a bit because when you upload your screen caps into Photoshop, they're going to be reversed. And you want to reverse them so that they will be playing in the correct order. If I play here, it's going to be that she already came down. And what we want is to go from Clark, which is the girl here, the blonde girl, and then it's going to focus into Octavia, which is this girl here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop, drop down menu and click reverse frames. So if we go back to the beginning, we'll have what we need. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to resize my image by, I'm going to make it really small, so actually I'm going to go here to my small caps, and it's going to be 250 by 141, and I'm going to go ahead and click it, maybe leave it like that, and click the drag mark to crop my GIF. The reason why I crop my GIFs small is because I don't like them to be overly big. Sometimes if your video quality is low quality, you can actually tell it. You can see it if your GIF size is overly big. So, we're going to go ahead and zoom into about 200%. And we're going to see how many frames we have. We have 97 frames in this. You can cut it into two if you want. For me, I'm going to go ahead and just delete every other frame. We have did this in the previous video, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it here in my timeline and set it in my layers. I'm gonna click one frame, holding control, click every other frame. And when I do this, I'm just basically deleting half of the frames in the gift set. So when it goes from 94 oak, go by habit size. I can't do math right now on top of my head, but you can do it for me and leave a comment if you want. Um But we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm just using my scroll on my mouse to click the or to scroll in the timeline window as well and I'm just holding control and just selecting the ones I don't want which is every other frame because we have a lot of frames and with more frames equals the bigger file size um, of the GIF and sometimes um, Tumblr would not allow you to upload them so after we have all that selected we can easily just click and drag to the, to the trash can here and now we have 49 frames once we have that, I'm going to click one frame, scroll to the end, holding shift to so select them all, and then clicking on one of the drop down menus, click other and go 0 0.15. Now what I like to do is I like to go to my time my drop down menu in my timeline and click flatten frames into layers. What I like to do I like to do this because when I do that, if I scroll up you'll see all my frames and they'll be numbered. And what I can do is easily delete all the ones underneath because I no longer need them. Because I already made them from the timeline frames. And as you see, I have a little bit of transparent background, as always, like the other video. Make a new layer, fill it with black, drag it to the bottom, and all the other ones should be fixed as well. And we can go ahead and press play and see how it plays. and it seems to be playing very well. Okay, so once we have that done, we can go ahead and do coloring if you need to. I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe darken it a bit and bring some color. So I'm gonna go to curves. I'm just gonna pull this down a bit and make sure that your curve frame is above all your frames in your layers palette so that it can be visible on all your, um, all your, um, get 
on your own frames as well. Maybe bump it up a little bit. Then we're going to go as selective color and bring some reds in there. Pull in some yellow, a little bit dark. We're going to go in and pull in some blues as well, darken that. If we can maybe pull some blue in on their shirts, let's see. Like so, we go into neutral, try to get some coloring in from there. So the yellows, go into the yellows and do that as well. And then we're going to go into blacks and pull that a little bit over. I'm going to go into exposure and bump that up a bit. And then I like to add some vibrance too. I think it was more vibrant. And if you have a little bit too much yellow, you can go back into selective color. Go into your yellows and change it by uh, toggling the yellow slider here. So you can go ahead and do that there. As well as mess with the other ones too. And then we're done. We can press play again. And it looks really good. See how it looks on the other scene here? Because she has more of the light on her. But it looks really nice. You can actually. I like to add one more thing. Which is just a gradient. You just go to draw the menu. Gradient. I like to add black to white. And select soft light. And then it gives it more of a light to dark look as well. Now we can go ahead and save it for, you know, to upload it wherever. You're going to go ahead and go to file, save for web. And of course it's going to take its time because it's going to load of course. So, so once it loads, you're going to go ahead and you have your preset used it that GIF 120 did there. You can check your GIF size here. Mine's is at 852.7. I'm going to just select Diffusion and click Pattern and see how high that goes. Because I like to use Pattern on my GIFs instead of everything else. And then I'm going to bump up the colors to, one, to 256 and see how high that goes. I usually get my GIFs between 1 and 1 1.2 MB. So it's right about there. I'm going to press Play again and... Um, it looks good, so we're going to click save. We're going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm just going to call it um, Octavia and Clark. And just save. Then I'm going to go into the internet. I'm just going to go ahead and open where I saved it at, which would be my videos and my folder and my guest folder. I'm just going to go ahead and once it's done. I'm just going to pull it into the internet browser and show you guys how it plays. And that's how it plays. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I hope to have more for you soon. Bye guys.